Welcome to the sublimation portion of our family YouTube channel. And this tutorial is on how I did these shoes. Ooh, ah. This is only the second pair I've done. So, yay. Yay! <laughs> and fall in the background. So, I want to go over the materials we need, the process, and applying the transfer. First off, Yay! we'll talk about the materials. Really, Paul? First, we're going to talk about the materials you're going to need. If you have some experience with sublimation, you know that you will need a sublimation printer and some kind of software program. I'm running on an Epson Workforce 7710, and I'm working on Silhouette Studio. So, Yay! all of... All of my software tricks are going to be using Silhouette Studio. Yay! Well, if you are using a Cricut machine, this isn't really going to apply because it's all about software. And you can download the Silhouette Studio software for free. Anyway, let's get on to it. Holy the material. I love him, but I'm really glad he's doing that in the background because it kind of meshes with the other parts of our channel, which is family shenanigans. So I hope he keeps doing it. Back to the tutorial. The materials you're going to need. Your printer and your software. Outside of that, you're going to need some scrap HTV. Big deal. Find a color that's not really pretty or you don't use. I use yellow. You are going to need this stuff. This is um, dark t-shirt transfer paper. It's made by PPD, and I order it in the 11 by 17. You can also order in 8.5 by 11. This was on Amazon. I will link um, links to materials in the description box. And you will need a heat gun. I covered my face. You need a heat gun. I bought this at Harbor Freight. They also sell them at Lowe's and Home Depot. I'll put a link to these in the description box. The other thing you're going to need are the shoes. So that's going to lead me into the design part. This whole process started because a friend had a pair of white canvas shoes and my niece was going to paint them and then my niece had surgery and she said let's try to customize them with you know um so we did and I tried a process that I learned from another YouTube creator she's her name's either MK Creations or Creation by MK I'll tag it's over here <laughs> I'm not even going to have a blooper reel. We're just going to keep going. I think you can tag a channel in the little cards. I think so. If you can, I will. I'll tag her channel. Please give her a look. I That's where I learned this process, where you use dark transfer paper and you apply it with a heat gun. The videos I watched from her, she was customizing footballs, baseballs, um, that sort of thing. So I actually did some footballs. And so knowing I can't really put the shoe in the heat press, I decided to try her process, which is a dark transfer paper and a heat gun. No, you did Yes, I did. No, you did <laughs> He's the best. He's just the best. You know what? Shameless plug. Go look at our other playlists. And we have home improvement playlists, and then we have general playlists with us just doing dumb stuff. And there's more dumb stuff coming. Anyway, back to the process. The shoes that she brought me were Levi's. And I looked for a template. Or something to work with for Levi's. I couldn't find any. So I had to modify. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the camera around and let you guys see the computer. And we'll do the design. So here's my Silhouette Studio workspace. If you can see here, I went and got a Vans clip art because I wanted something with this part of the shoe. This is part of shoe we're customizing. So basically what I did was um, traced 
this section of the shoe. And because I played, before filming this tutorial, I played with it. And I knew that my threshold needed to be an 83. Uh, you said threshold. And trace. I knew I needed an 83 to get somewhat of a clean line. Yeah, you see? They're already ready. I had them hidden under the shoe template. Anyway. So I did a release compound path. And I used this piece right here. It does that to me. And I threw everything else away. Now, this is right here. This is where your scrap 651 vinyl comes into play. The way I did this process is I would cut this. You can see it right here, right there. I cut a little sample, I laid it on the shoe, and then I did point editing to get from here to here. And that's where you click this little button right here and you do point editing. So this was a, definitely a trial and error. You notice there's a lot of points and what I have learned is if you go through and delete a lot of these points, it'll smooth it out. I had to do a little off camera work. So this is what I was working with. You see all the points. What I did is I went off camera and deleted a bunch of them, which you can do. See, now with fewer points to work with, I can move things around. And this is what I'm talking about. Disregard this, this is just a sample. Just an example. Do you see how you can move things around with point editing? That was, the point editing is how I got this to look like this and then this. Um, the process I used, Okay, disregard this. That's a just I was just showing you point editing. We're back to this image right here. With fewer points, it makes it easier to move things around. So I did a process where I would this was phase one. I cut it in scrap 651 vinyl, and I wanted to look how it looked on the shoe. And as I saw it on the shoe, I saw where to make movements. So for example, if it wasn't long enough, I would stretch it out, make it longer. If it was too narrow, I could do the whole thing. Then I would cut it again, put it on the shoe and make adjustments. If I needed it wider, I would go wider or longer. And then I would notice like this point down here, if it wasn't right, I would do point editing and move it out or certain sections needed to come in or out. I would make those adjustments and then cut it till I got it right. So that was the point editing process. Now what I want to explain is you are working with shoes. So my first pair of shoes were a seven women's and the pair of shoes I'm doing today are a 10. This isn't even the first template I worked with. I made slight modifications to fit the size 10. It's time to show you guys the cut that I did with the 651 vinyl. We were just talking about the process. You get a template and I would cut it, make adjustments, make it longer, wider. And so I would do that over and over again until it looked good enough and I mean good enough because it doesn't have to be perfect so this was me I made a cut I could put it on the shoe and then I could see where I needed to make adjustments this is obviously a rough copy you know but um, like for instance you see how this doesn't match? I would go to the design part and I would do that point editing and take this point and move it down. And I would stretch this part down. Do you see what I'm saying? 
um, until, and then I would do another cut. So uh, back and forth. What I'm trying to say is back and forth. I would adjust the template, cut, adjust the template, cut, until I felt like it was close enough. The key word here is close enough. This is the template for this shoe. And it's not perfect. Not at all. It's not. What you, um, a good thing to remember is the dark transfer paper has some stretchability. It's not going to be like this. It has some stretchability. You can move. So, for instance, if this doesn't come down all the way, when you're putting it on the shoe, I'll show you guys when we get to that process, you can pull it down. So, this doesn't have to be perfect. It isn't perfect, but it needs to be close. Um, a good thing to remember um, on the shoe, you have this white edge. That's going to be your your best friend because that gives you some wiggle room. That's why your template can be a little imperfect. It can be a little off. You don't want it a lot, but a little will be okay. Here are my designs ready to print. Uh, my page is already set up for 11 by 17. I'll go to file print. I'll select my rear tray. I'll select 11 by 17 paper. And then you print this like you would regular paper. You do not mirror reverse. That's a big deal. Don't mirror reverse. We've made it to the application process. These have already been printed and cut. This is what they look like. Uh, you have to peel the backing. So I'm going to lay it on my shoe right here. As you can tell, still, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm fixing to, uh, fixing to get loud. Okay, now I have it laid on the shoe, and then all I have to do is apply it with the heat gun. If it doesn't, see if it doesn't come down all the way, you can pull it and stretch it. I'm going to turn my heat gun on the low setting to start with, and I'm going to apply heat right here, start at the toe. See how it's starting to heat up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply heat all the way up. Kind of get that middle. You may have to stop and pull. And don't worry about that right now because we can get that out later. After you get the middle, come over here to the side. Apply the side. Just, you just want to get it, you just want to get it where it's on the shoe. I like to start with the low heat. Now, I've applied the center, I applied the side and the side. I know you see some wrinkles, don't worry yet because we can straighten those out. Now, take your heat gun, put on the high setting. Apply quick, quick heat. Now you see right there? Can you see where it's starting to turn dark? That's when you know it's applied, when the image gets dark. Don't stay on one spot too long, because it can burn. So apply it and move. Flatten it out. See how I flatten out that wrinkle? Now I can tell which parts need heat. Obviously the toe, see how it's a little gray, kind of ashy. Apply the heat and then smooth it out. Don't stay in one spot for too long. See how we smooth those wrinkles out?
Now I'm just going back and checking, see if there's any spots that need heat. Just adding heat. Gently, gently smooth it out because it is hot. See a wrinkle? You can tap it and smooth it out. You won't get every wrinkle out, but these are so small that they don't mess up the overall look of the shoe. Looking through the camera, I can't really see them. You can see that one. Let's smooth it out. And you're done now the reason why I said that your template doesn't have to be perfect um, this one came out a little too far here this one looks good you're mainly focused on this area of the shoe so you can have errors down here you can even have some here my tiny 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 errors that if you take both shoes they look really 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 good The last thing you need to do is get a clear coat, uh, take them outside, spray them, I will spray them at least three times and wait 30 minutes between each coat with a clear coat. When you spray the clear coat, you want to get far away. Don't spray up close. Um, this is just a Rust-Oleum clear top coat. I got this at Walmart. It's nothing really special. And there's the final look. This is what the shoes look like. The trickiest part, I would say, is getting the template right and the design. Once the template is complete, you can reuse it. You would just have to make adjustments for the shoe size. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I want you guys to get up there and try it. I know the template seems tricky, but I want you to remember that it doesn't have to be perfect. You need it close, and you can do that. If I can do it, anybody can do it. I want you all to really enjoy it trying these shoes. Um, I will link descriptions for all the items that I use in the description box. And I'll link my email. If you guys make these shoes, send me a picture. I'd love to see it. Thanks for watching.